was pretty weak, but uh, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. You said good. You just didn't really mean it, most of you. Um, I, he said reminders, and I know that uh, Matthew already covered it, but I, he covered two of these, well, at least one of these things I'm going to mention. The men's retreat, I, I have had guys tell me over the years, well, you know, I'm not really a retreat guy. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm like, I, I want to say something, and I'm serious about this. If you're not, if you're like, I'm not really into men's retreats, you don't sleep well, this or that, just pray about whether or not God would have you go, and it's not even primarily about you. Uh, because sometimes we decide, I'm not going to go because I don't think I'm going to get something or whatever. What if you're supposed to be there specifically for one of their men in here to pour into their life? Uh, I say that to my kids all the time. They're like, well, I don't want to go to that thing because I'm not going to get anything out of it. I'm like, what if that's not the point? So I would just encourage you to pray either way. And if you can go, you should go. I, I really do believe that. Um, if, uh, if you would, a couple of things, fasting prayers going on. These cards are out there. We're going to print a bunch more. Invite people to be here for the next week uh, of events for Passion Week. I invited somebody today. We'll see if they actually come, but they told me they'd come. You know, I, they don't go to church at all. I was walking my dog. I'll come back to that story in a second. And uh, just people are open. Uh, Resurrection Sunday, also known as Easter um, it's a good time to invite people. Um, I'm going to talk about two things real quick. This first part is just preface. The brain is an amazing thing. It is, uh, it is something that I spent a little bit of time uh, when I was younger studying in school. And, uh, I'll, I remember being in a, a, uh, mammalian physiology class and then getting a concussion and losing 30 hours of memory that I never got back um, and talking to the professor about, you know, retroactive amnesia and just thinking how the brain is such an interesting uh, thing. It, it is an amazing thing. Um, I've mentioned it before, but I was most fascinated how the brain functions many years ago. I think it was around 2011 when that congresswoman in Arizona, in Tucson, Arizona, was shot, Gabby Giffords. Remember that? And I watched a special, some of you have heard me speak to before, where she could not speak other than maybe just, she's progressed in her recovery, you know, it's been 13 years. But she couldn't speak, but when they did the interview, they asked her to sing, and she could sing full sentences or even paragraphs. And, and the reason is because, well, let me quote it to make sure I get it right. The simplest way to explain it is that the left hemisphere is very specialized for speaking, and the right hemisphere is more specialized for carrying a tune. But your body, her brain, actually, because it was the speech center that was primarily affected, can learn to speak using the side of the brain that's primarily used to sing. Uh, the brain is an amazing thing, but here's what's more amazing is the mind, the mind. And the mind is not something you can see. And uh, the brain and the mind are not the same, certainly not biblically. So uh, let me uh, give you a couple of quotes, uh, things I came across. The organ of the brain is a physical outer person reality. It is not the mind, and it stands in contrast to the mind. The mind, according to Scripture, is more than just your thoughts. It's a way of thinking and approach and attitude as the sum total of the whole mental and moral state of a being. In fact, as I've been taught, the, the, uh, the mind is a piece of the soul. Now, you can get into different def definitions. You always wanna go back to scripture. I like this quote the best, and then we'll jump into some scripture. To be most biblical, I like the way this person said it, which makes us most accurate, we should speak of the brain as the outer person and the mind as the inner person. And there's a little more to it than that, but it's a piece of the soul. But here's the amazing thing. God wants all of us. He wants everything that we've got. Jesus answered him. He's being tested here. The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment and the second 
Like it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. We've talked about it a little bit. There is no other commandment greater than these. So God wants our mind. He wants our brain. He wants our body. He wants all of our soul. He wants our spirit. Uh, he, he deserves it, and he wants all those things. And what we're going to talk about tonight is the renewed mind. Um, you got the passage, Ephesians 4, starting in verse 17. We're going to talk about, my Bible says the new man, but I, I really think the focus is on the mind here, uh, at least as I read it. Um, I, I was looking forward to using this. I haven't used this picture in a while. Uh, first thing is uh, the mind of futility. The mind of futility. I realize I just said the brain and the mind are not the same thing, and they're not, but you can't picture the mind because it's, it's invisible. So I'll go with this. Now listen to the words of the first couple, few verses. This I say, therefore, and testify. Whenever you get a therefore, what is it therefore? It's connecting it back to what's been taught the last couple of weeks, how are we supposed to live? And even before that, who we are in Christ, Ephesians 1 through 3. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in what? The futility of your mind, of their mind, having, watch, it's a lot of descriptives here, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. I actually think a better translation, and maybe you have it, is hardness of their heart. Is that what it says in ESV? It's one time the ESV got it better there. Yeah, we'll go with it. Who being past feeling um, have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. Now, this is a list of things that we don't want to be on. Um, it, it is all these things that the mind of futility brings into being. This is who we are when we have a fleshly mind. If our mind has not yet been renewed by the Spirit of God, uh, it's a mind of futility. It's not primarily about the brain. It's about having the mind of Christ. You can be very intelligent and have a mind that is in no way yielded to the Lord. I've met a lot of those people. <laughs> and ultimately, they have no godly wisdom. Even though they're super intelligent, they have no godly wisdom because what's the root of wisdom? Where does it start? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So to have great wisdom, you have to get at the beginning first, right? So we need to first understand who God is to have true wisdom. Let me give you a description that Paul gives elsewhere. Romans 1, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts. You see that phrase and, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Watch the parallels. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. And birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness. And you'll see this parallel. In the lusts of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever, amen. How many of you would say we could apply that straight, straight out to what we're seeing today? It's nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. It's when our minds are fleshly, when they're yet to be renewed. And, and we need the fear of the Lord. That's the beginning of the process. The world, if we allow it to, will shape us and change us. The things that you take in will impact you. And I want to ask the question, and I want you to think about it for a second. What do you take in to your mind of the world that you shouldn't be taking in? And I'm not going to call on you or anything, but I just want you to think about it. Because I would venture to say all of us take in some things from the world that are not fruitful in any way. But we're taking them in, and they're affecting not just our brain, but they're affecting our mind the world. What we take in impacts our lives. I mean, I, my, my sons, when they sort of first started playing video games, they wanted to play certain video games. And we're like, no, you're not playing this game. You're not playing that game. And they're like, well, it, it doesn't affect me. Oh, it did. You know, I mean, like they start beating each other. And if they had a gun, they would have shot each other. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it, 
If you love video games, you know, you take that up with God. But I'm just saying, it, it impacts you, what you see, what you take in. Let me give you some scripture. I'll put Homer up there one more time. Ephesians 2. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So alienated from God, ignorance of God's way. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. How many of you know, apart from the work of the Holy Spirit, we're done. There, there's not any hope. We're not going to figure it out. And, and where the ESV got it right, where it says blindness of heart, the word at the root that's translated in the New King James, blindness, I don't know why, it actually was used medically in the first century of when a bone is broken and it begins to calcify when it reshapes, and it's stronger at that point. Or a callus, like for people that actually do physical work. Are there any of those people in here still? Um, they get calluses on their hands. Um, it, it hardens, right? So they, they had a hardened heart. Uh, it, it, it gives another phrase here that I, I jotted down, and I wanted to find scriptures for each of them, an unfeeling state where we don't feel it anymore. Watch this. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Have you ever, have you ever, I mean, maybe that's, this is you. Are, are there any guys in here that barbecue a lot? Like, I'm not going to test you out, but you barbecue a lot. I've seen guys that when they barbecue, they don't use tongs. Like, they just use their hands to turn the steaks. And then you look at their hands, and they have no more fingerprints anymore. Like, it's just, it's seared. This is talking about a conscience being seared, the mind being seared to the point that they don't, have any impact when they sin. It doesn't impact them. I've had people tell me, you know, I can sin, but it doesn't really impact me. It doesn't really affect me. Um, well, that's because you're probably very dead spiritually. If I drop a bowling ball on a person that's dead, it won't bring an impact. I mean, it'll have an impact on their body, but they're not going to respond. Sin impacts us. And he begins to describe sin. He uses the word lewdness. What is lewdness? It's, it's, it's another word for sin that's basically like there's no shame at all. Have you ever known people, they sin and they, and they like don't even try to hide it. They're like, this is who I am and this is what I do. It often in scripture connects to sexual sin. They have as Pastor Dave talked about when we did the intro, temple prostitution was like a thing. I mean, the first advertisement they found in that region was, here's where the prostitutes are. You know, follow this path. Here's the footprint. You just keep going this way. And are we any different today in our culture? The old man is oriented towards sin. Do you have to teach your kids, anybody that's a parent in here ever have to teach your kids how to sin? I mean, you may have, but you didn't have to. They, they, they know how to sin. Our daughter, and I'll give her some props in a minute. She's pretty awesome, and I'm biased, but she didn't get in a lot of trouble, like, ever. But I remember very vividly when she was about two and a half, three years old, uh, we had our second child, and she was, she's a delivery nurse now, labor and delivery nurse. She loves babies. She loved Nathan, our middle son. She took care of him when he was really little, and, and it was so awesome. But one day I walked in, and I don't know what he had been doing, crying or causing problems for her, and I saw her looking around, and he was in his car seat with the big handle on, up on the counter. And I saw her look this way and look that way and just yank that thing off and then walk away. <laughs> You know, he was strapped in, thank the Lord. He just like dropped him on the floor. And I was like, what just happened? I did not teach her to do that, I'll assure you. I didn't have to. Something bothered her that he did. He was like not able to walk or talk, but, you know, jealousy, whatever it was. We don't have to teach kids. We, we didn't have to learn how to sin. We tend in our flesh towards sin compromise. And, and how many of you see in the church today in our culture is such a pull towards just giving in to sin? Like, you know what, we don't want to offend anybody, so we'll just accept it all. Gluttony, drunkenness, sexual sin, it's not a new thing. Abortion, homosexuality, gender issues, go study Ephesus. They had all those things. 
None of it's new. I'm going to ask a, a personal question here for a second. And you don't, again, you don't have to speak out, but does anyone remember how you used to think before you were saved and how broken your thinking was? Does anybody remember? Like how you looked at money or how you looked at time or work. And I'm not saying we're all there, right? Because it's a process. How you looked at women. Does anybody be able to say, I, I mean, hopefully if you're married, uh, you, you have transitioned, but that you look at women very differently than you used to. You think differently about women. I'd encourage you, if you struggle in that area, start to think of women as somebody's daughter, as, if they're a believer, as a sister in Christ, because we should have our minds renewed. We should think differently. When you have a super annoying neighbor, you can have your mind renewed to see that as an opportunity to show the love of Jesus Christ rather than an opportunity to punch him in the face. Uh, there, there can be a transition that takes place in us as our minds are renewed. Let me show it to you again in Scripture. And do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the renewed mind is different. I'm gonna read these last verses here and then we'll talk about it for a few more minutes. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. It's not just taught about him, it's taught by him that you put off. It's gonna tell you what to put off and and then it's gonna transition to a section on what to put on. That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. You heard him, not just about him. You've been taught by him. And, and the phrases are important. It's, it's a different standard in the world. Having not just learned about Christ, if, if I'm reading it right, it says having learned what? Christ. It, it's taking on who he is. It's having the mind of Christ. It, it's being in Christ. It's being changed from the inside out in the inner man being different. I love that, that verse that gets quoted a lot. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. It's, it's not something, and I want to say this to everybody in here. If you checked out, check back in. It's not about you and I trying harder to live the way we're supposed to live. It's about us surrendering and yielding and ultimately dying to our flesh daily. We have to put off. I love what in David Guzik's notes, he talks about if someone gets out of prison, one of the first things they're gonna do is take off the prison clothes and they're gonna put on something else. What would you think if somebody got out of prison and they kept those clothes on? You think they don't understand what's transitioned here. Uh, it should not look the same. If you say, if I say that we've given our lives to the Lord, but we still haven't put on something new or taken off the old, then something's seriously wrong. We should put on something different. We should be different. So you have to put off the old man, the deceitful lusts. When, when you think of deceitful lusts, well, don't think about it too much. But when you, when you think about it for men, I would think most of us, the greatest struggle with lust is in the, in, well, it could be with money. But I think for most men, somewhere in there in the top one is sexual lust. Um, it, it's... <laughs> It's in the top one. Um, I, I came across this in something I wrote a long time ago, and I'm going to go with it again. Has anybody ever watched, like, the National Geographic channel, and, and you've seen the thing about the mating process with a praying mantis? Am I the only one? Okay, here it is. When, when a praying mantis mates, the male is smaller, and he finds the female, he, he kind of lures her in, but something happens. You might notice something about this picture. The male is on top. Do you notice anything? He has no head. Because this is what happens. As they begin to mate, the female turns and eats it off. 
She eats off his head, but he continues to, quote, unquote, perform for hours. But he's literally lost his head. And here's my warning to you. <laughs> I, I don't care what enjoyment your body gets if you lose your head. It, it, if you lose what matters most, it doesn't matter. And, and I'm watching this thing. I watched it, I watched it again today because I've watched, I've watched these videos. You can go look it up on your own if you're a weirdo like me. Um, but here's the deal. It, they said, well, he gets to pass on his genetics or whatever. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> My head is gone. Don't, and, and, and apply it. Some of you are, are taking in stuff from the world and you are literally losing spiritually who you are in those moments. Your mind is darkened. You're, you're pulled in to a place and, and you have no idea what you're losing in the midst. It's like that old proverb, can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? I mean, you know, we know the answer to that question, right? If you throw fire in your lap, it's not good. And, and yet, sometimes we think it's gonna be okay. No, we have to put off and then we have to put on. Again, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How do we do this? I'm going to begin to talk about it just for the last few minutes here. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Some of you know this passage, but look at the last part. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God Doing what? Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Have you ever tried to do that and failed? I have. You have to have the mind of Christ. If Matt's mind is trying to not think about something, guess what Matt's mind does? He, it thinks about only that. But if, if the, I have the mind of Christ and all of my thoughts go through a filter, the Holy Spirit is motivating and there's a transformation that takes place. What in your mind needs to be renewed tonight? What needs to be renewed? You may talk about this in your groups. You don't have to talk about it if you're not ready to talk about it, but I want you to process it. And if you're willing, if you trust the guys in your group, and hopefully by now you have some good trust in there, what needs to be renewed? Um, we should know what, what is darkened in our minds and what remains to be renewed, and it's not a one-time thing, right? It's, it's a daily allowing our minds to be renewed by the Holy Spirit. How does it happen? Look at verse 23 again. And be renewed, what? In the spirit of your mind. By whom? By the Holy Spirit. Let me, let me give you the hows. So this is gonna be pretty quick. This is meaty stuff, but I'm gonna just give it to you quick, and you can jot it down talk about it in your groups, chew on it. How do you have your mind renewed? Well, one, you don't do it, really. You allow it to happen in, in some sense, but number one, you get saved. If you're here today and you're hearing all this stuff, you're like, man, I wanna be different, but you're not truly saved, well, then start there. Because Jesus says you have to be born of the Spirit. And if you're not born of the Spirit, then you don't have the Spirit in you, you're not gonna have a renewed mind. You can try all you want. You can hear about Jesus all you want. But if you're not in Christ, you're missing the foundation. So number one, you need to be saved. Number two, you need to allow the Holy Spirit more and more room, taking on the mind of Christ. Let me give you another verse. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of God, are being transformed into the same image, the image of what? Of Christ. Watch the language of this one on the next one, I think. From glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. I showed this video um, on Sunday, in case you weren't here, just to remind you of what oh. surrender looks like. Um, and, and while that's playing, you can watch that, and I'll just talk for a second. Surrender is not a, a casual thing. It's not something we, we play around with. When we're truly surrendered... Um, oh. We give up. 
we let go. There's nothing else we can do because we are as good as dead. We're dead. That's it right there. You, you have to let it have its... Ha, I think way too often, guys, we play around with surrender. Like, I'm going to give God a little bit more today and a little bit more today, but I'm going to keep this 15 minutes for myself. I'm going to keep this thing I'm looking at. I'm going to keep these thoughts in my mind, this show that I watch. I remember when my kids used to walk, uh, walk in and, and I'd be watching some super violent show for no reason, and they're like, Dad, what are you watching? I'm like, get out. You know, just leave me alone. And, and then I became convicted because my wife's like, yeah, if you're so bothered that they would see it, why are you watching it? Whatever it is, we need to have the mind of Christ. Let me give you one last verse. And then I've got one more question and we'll be done. And have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to what? The image of him who created him. We have to be, in a sense, a new creation, recreated in the image of God because the image of God in us has been marred. It's broken. One of the reasons our culture is so broken is because people have lost an understanding what it is to be created in the image of God. They don't know what their identity is because if you don't believe there's a God, you have no idea what the foundation of your life, your purpose is. And it's, it's being skewed in so many different ways. We should know as men in the body of Christ what our identity is. We are in Christ, created in his image, being renewed in our mind, being renewed in our knowledge, being recreated in the image of Christ. So here are the things. I didn't say them all out. Salvation, Holy Spirit, surrender, and the last one is prayer. It's not too late to join in on on the prayer time. I know some of you can't come at 730, but you can take this home and you can spend a bunch of time in prayer when you have time. That's the purpose of the little guide. It's not stuck to the church. But I'm going to tell you this, you want to have a mind renewed, pray. Pray. Invite God to do something. I'm going to tell you a quick story, um, real quick. Uh, Today, uh, I had a a bunch of meetings early in the day, and then I needed to go back and put something together to have something to say tonight. And so I went to study. But we have a new dog, these two dogs. They're both from shelters. One's not even housebroken yet. They're, They're a mess. So I went home, and I had to walk the dogs and I only had a limited time. Like, I got to get these things out. They do their business. I'm going to get back to my business, and, and this will be done. And while I was walking, I said this prayer out loud. I said, Lord, help me to have your mind. Help me to see what you see. Help me to be light in my community as I'm walking. And I was praying as I was walking. And I, the walk that was supposed to be 10 minutes ended up being an hour and 45 minutes. Because every person I encountered was ready to receive truth about who Jesus is. I I talked to three people, and I got to share the Lord with three people in a row. Why? Because I'm awesome. You all know me better than that. Well, not all of you, but most of you. (laughs) It's because I said, Lord, I'm going to be yours in this time, which I thought was 10 minutes. And there were just people out in the front of their, in our, in our neighborhood. I mean, like, they're out in the neighborhood. One guy was with his dog, and, and my dogs were obedient for, like, the 25 minutes that I talked to this guy and invited him to church and shared the Lord with them. And, and I'm telling you, it isn't me. It's when I say, Lord, I'm yours. My mind is yours. My time is yours. And I really surrender, like, like the little dog in that video. Like, I'm just letting go because I'm as good as dead. I am dead in my in my flesh, in my, my brokenness, but let him renew your mind. Let him renew your mind. Amen? I think that's it. Until you go to your groups. I, I want you to chew on these things. I, I put a couple questions in there that are easy, but a couple that are really hard on purpose. Not hard to answer, just, well, hard to, to be real about. Uh, so let's pray, and then you can go to your groups. Lord, Help our minds to be renewed. Lord, it is not enough to, uh, to go to church. It's not enough to walk an aisle and then just leave it. Um, Lord, we need to be transformed daily. And Lord, you want more from us because you love us too much to leave us where we're at. 
I pray for guys to be real as much as they are, are able to be. And I pray, Lord, that we would be changed. That some guys would decide tonight, I'm not going to look at that anymore. I'm not going to entertain that relationship anymore. I'm not going to keep dating this person anymore. Um, I'm not going to treat people that way in my workplace anymore. I'm not going to cheat the system in that way anymore. Whatever it is, Lord, whatever lusts, whatever broken places there are in our mind, I pray our minds would be renewed and we would yield to you and we would see you do things that would never happen except that we are in Christ. We are a new creation. We have the mind of Christ because we've died to our flesh and your spirit has made us alive and new. And I pray you do that work for those in need. If I pray, Lord, there's anybody that's not yet saved, that's not received you as Savior and Lord, uh, that they'd talk to somebody about that tonight, to Pastor Dave or myself or somebody. And for those of us that are just feeling stuck in some area, we'd find somebody we trust enough to get real and to get right before you, not on our own strength, but by your Spirit and in yielding to the work of your Spirit to renew our minds. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. So group time.